I put them on tables and we change distances of course and they get a ball and now you hit. So we how a boy would hit the buttons yes. told me more yes. than obviously any psychiatrist yes. got in his session. Yes. There were some honey, it was almost frightening. You had the feeling they would kill all these bottles mm -hmm. if they would just get a chance, yes. you know. Yes. The power, the, the anger, mm -hmm. how they threw that ball. Mm -hmm. And then you had others the ball fell here and the, and the bottles were there. Mm -hmm. Not because they had a physical handicap, mm -hmm. but not because they couldn't see where the bottles were. These were different mm -hmm. reasons. Because they couldn't develop the ambition, the power to throw it. Yes. So I brought the tables close enough, so they did throw them. Of course, there had to be success. Yes. With my props, yes. honey, they were only to be success. So you were always adjusting the props and adjusting of course, the space in of order course. to be able to help them be successful. For instance, when they threw, uh, you know, uh, to get good arm movement, good freedom most of all, we had the streamers. Well, if one didn't know how to throw, you know, well, then you got a short streamer mm -hmm. so that you wouldn't <laughs> get all walled up in that streamer. But if one had it, you know, so she could throw streamers and, 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 and she felt good, you know. I mean, almost every object that I used. Now, for instance, boys, I always had to have balls. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to, I learned. I was in America, we had to have balls. Mm -hmm. I put, I hung a, a, a no, a, no, the, the wheels. Uh, a basketball? A hula hoop. Hula. A hula hoop. Oh, I worked with hula. Hula hoops. Hula hoops you can't replace. Yeah. I hung the hula hoops up. And now we had to throw the ball through the hula hoop. Mm -hmm. Well, some of course. So first time I hung the hula hoop lower, first time I hung the hula hoop lower. So one I would stood far away from the And if one was too good, yeah. I hung up three hula hoops. Mm -hmm. And they had to throw the ball through three hula hoops, you know. <laughs> I mean, there was, there was no prop that you couldn't adapt. So it sounds like you used whatever, you, whatever was available to stimulate these children yeah. to move, to interact, to be present. In of course, interaction. Yes. Now, you see, you asked me for the boys, and I had men. They were 17, 18, 19 and they were afraid of putting their hands on the floor. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to learn the handstand or the cartwheel, oh, yeah. cartwheel. No, so what did I do? I put, I'm very proud of that. Mm -hmm. I put their legs on a chair. Yeah. I got them to do that. So then they had to put their hands on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't push these boys, honey, somewhere 200 pounds. You know, when they are retarded, then mm -hmm. they, they mm, get very heavy. Yes. So I had the hands on the floor, and preferably it was a lighter one, not 200 pounds. I put hands on the floor mm -hmm. and the legs in the chair, and I pushed the chair, mm -hmm. you know. And so he had to push a little bit for. We got to the point that two boys, each one held one leg, mm -hmm. and they pushed him. So we had uh, three people. Mm -hmm. You know, we had already social a uh, group. Yes. And I th always, I always started yes. with one and then got social interaction. Mm -hmm. I always tried to get, oh, for instance, rope jumping. Mm -hmm. These uh, kids that we had, you know, rope jumping, if they were visit, mm -hmm. honey, they knew how to rope jump and they knew their songs, you know. But one first, and then two, the, the top, then do jump. You know, you could you could use anything mm -hmm. from an individual to mm -hmm. others. So it sounds like music and the use of props were very present in each one of your sessions. Yeah. What else did you do in your sessions? Can you remember? 
yeah. well I told stories. Yeah. And there was the story that I would give as an example, because it shows how careful you have to be with your stories. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, of course, always mixed group, honey. They were always black and Spanish and, and white children and, uh, I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. And they were these institutions where they were sleeping. Mm -hmm. They had shared their Very bedrooms, nice. everything, you know. So there was really no concept, I think. Well, for me, there never was a concept because I had met my first black people in this country. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, there was uh, no difference. And so I had this one story that I thought was very good. I was a baker, and I made big gingerbread men, gingerbread men. And they had to lie on the floor, and each one I baked. I had the dough, and I made the gingerbread man. I made a head, and very gentle. Oh, how they loved it. When I touched the head gentle, and then I body in the right arm, and the left arm, and then I made a belly button. Oh, they laughed, and then the legs, right leg, left leg, right foot leg. So established body. And then I said, well, now what shall I do? What how eyes do you want? So they ordered their eyes. And then, what mouth do you want? And so we, we put any, what they wanted. And then, of course, they were almost finished. But now, what do you want? To be powdered with sugar or powdered with chocolate powder? So then you would be white and then you would be black. And of course, their desires were completely mixed up. And then I put them into strong sun so they would bake. Yeah. And then I played lively music, and now my gingerbread men come alive, and we all dance, and this is big magic, and uh, they danced and so on. So it was a full session to develop body image, yeah. complete body image, and so I did it until one day a child came to me and said, Mrs. Spoke, I'm not really a gingerbread man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I learned. And what did you learn? What? What did you learn exactly? Well, of course not, but I never used the gingerbread man. No. With these children, you have to be very careful. Yes. Yes. With all children, you have to be very careful. Yes. I agree with you. You know, Elizabeth, I, I know that from your work, you developed a series of records. Yes, yes, because I used music, and to find the music I need yes. was a big job, honey. I really hunted every store, and thank God at that time the, the um, manufacturers left them open, so I could try them out. Nowadays, when they all are packed in plastic, I couldn't try them out. So I tried everything. Mm -hmm. And Hochter at that time, honey, these are all centuries away. Don't forget, I'm a very old woman now. So at, at that time, I was younger. So I went, and Hochter, who was manufacturing a lot of records, and because he was a dancer, and his wife was a dancer, and his daughter was a dancer, he said, what are you looking for? You look folk dances, and you take plus, and you take so I said, well, I use music for my work and so on. Oh, could you make me a list that would like to, to see what you are using? So I proudly told her, she said, are you insane? He would use your list? No, you can talk to him, but that is your record then. So I went to him, and he said, well, of course, I can write your name on it if you want to. So I said, no, my colleagues said, you should make a record with my things, and I will give you a guide book or something so that they know how you use these records. But uh, no, we would have to have a contract. A contract with me? Why do you need a contract? I'm an honest man. I said, Mr. Hochter, my colleagues say you are not. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Well, we had a beautiful relationship for years. Yes. But I, I found out. But his record started my career as a dance therapist because I used his record later on and the people from, you see, his record, if you want to see it, that was his, the first record. There you still see the children from the Lexington School for the Deaf. But this one now, of course, was, this was, was done by the educational activity firm. Mm -hmm. And they... That was your second record. Yes, and then they wanted a third one. Yes. So, and now I've survived my records. Mm -hmm. People don't use records anymore. They only use uh, discs. Except that you mentioned to me this morning that you just received a letter from someone... Oh, that yes, that was... That was look, after so many years, Hochter's record was made in 1988. Yes. And the so educational activities record were made in 71 and 72. Mm -hmm. Now this beautiful colleague of mine, Mason in Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. sends me a letter that I got last week. Please send me records I wrote to these firms and they don't have them anymore. I have to have them. <laughs> so I wrote to her, I only have six left and they don't, I don't give away. But a friend of mine made some tapes. Mm -hmm. And I think I gave her an idea. She will make her own tapes. Mm -hmm. Very wonderful story. Um, Elizabeth, I, I know that you also worked at um, Adelphi for very many years. That was for many years. I thought, check, 25 years. Um, and there was a Saturday program, an arts program. For well, children. honey, this program is, of course, no more. And this is one of the greatest loss, I would say, that any college school or the can think of. So talk about your work there, because I know that you were hired as Well, this was there. dance. This was dance and creative dance. Yes. And mm -hmm. Dr. Grace Stanner Street, who was a genius, who had been an actress. And later on, when Adelphi moved from Brooklyn to Garden City, mm -hmm. his wife of Dr. Eddie mm -hmm. and Grace had been friends, and when uh, Dr. Eddie looked, I think Eddie was his name, I am very bad with names, let's say he was Eddie. He asked his wife for ideas how he could draw the community mm -hmm. into the uh, Adelphi University, and she got together with Grace Steiner Street, and they decided maybe they can have an a Saturday program with creative dramatics. Mm -hmm. Well, Grace was a genius. She knew that wouldn't be enough. She will need music, she will need dance, and she started to draw top people, mm -hmm. top deep. And uh, you someday... You were among them, she hired you. But I said you were among the top people, she hired you. Later on, she started, uh, well, I, will, I, I tell you, the names don't come to me right now, but she started with top people. And then she got me for the girls, and she got Bruce King mm -hmm. for the boys, and she got Helen Lanfer for music. Helen Lanfer was out of this world for music. Create, everything creative, honey. Our, Assignment was whatever you do. Mm -hmm. It has to help the creativity mm -hmm. of the children. Now the children at, at oh, the only children, were not only children. children. Only the parents were allowed to observe mm -hmm. and have sessions with the teachers. Mm -hmm. But the program was for children. Mm -hmm. But they were not handicapped children, they were No, they were normal. very bright children. Yes. Honey, these were children. And Young men still come when I, uh, unexpectedly I was at a, where was it, a Wendy or something, and one young man jumps up, falls around.